Hello everyone, and welcome to another exhibition match replay set. This time we have some slightly older replays. These were requested a little while ago. Can't exactly remember by who. So I don't know who's supposed to be winning, or I guess getting advice, or whatever. It means Dregs and Randy, who are pretty much the top players right now, I are very close to... Hey? No, well, okay, Manitoul's also really strong. So it's like... Yeah, Dregs and Randy are among the top players. I don't know what advice I can give them. This is more going to be a matter of showing or showcasing whatever they did. Anyway, Dregs going for Rampbot Factory, gunning a few archers because that's what you do. I mean, it, they coexist reasonably okay with Ducks as the tournament showed, much to my surprise. But they are a very strong unit that should be used fairly often. And against Spiders, actually, I don't know. I, I legit don't know, because look at the stats. You know, I have 255 range, and I'm thinking, you know, compared to Venom. And no, this is a slightly older version of the game, so I believe Venom was a little overtuned in this version. Or, or no, 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 never mind. Sorry, this is a version before it got overtuned. So this is when it's pure stun. What I really cared about was right back. What? Double check right back range at 300 Elmo. So Archer's probably not ideal. Ducks, on the other hand. Yeah, two, 240 Elmo. Yeah, red backs are going to have... Red backs going to have a field day here. Anyhow. Dregs. We saw last time on this map was fighting against Gulda, who is also going for Spiders, while Dregs went for Amphbots. And, as I recall there, Dregs did some... They, they did a lot of mistakes as far as actually setting up their overall position. Because, of course, with Spiders, you can go up the ramps real easy. With Amphbots, you... Well, I mean, you can go up the ramps, but you can't go up to the cliffs any other way. So, that was really heavily abused. Also, Dregs started on the center last time, and now they're starting on the corner. Meaning they have a little bit more control over that cliff region than they did when they were in the center, at least that seems to be the theory. Like, I did actually talk to them about it after I casted that last game, and that was something they were talking about, thinking that they should start in corners, not in the center. Randy, however, is starting in the center, but they are going for spiders, so again, that height advantage isn't really a big deal. They basically have that unlock. Oh. Well, here's an interesting thing. <laughs> here's an interesting little interaction. Venom can't really hit underwater, because it can't hit underwater, and the archer... well, it's dead now. But it couldn't hit underwater before, so the archer could survive shooting from underwater, because sonic weapons go through water. Clever. Anyhow, Dregs is getting quite a strong economy out of this, my goodness. I mean, not just reclaim. Randy building up reasonably quickly, but Dregs' static economy is surprisingly strong. Granted, part of it being also because Dregs is harassing quite aggressively. And hey, that ramp is being used! What? How in the world? Oh, Randy didn't set up any defenses near their base. Huh. I mean, the duck's not going to survive very long, but still, it got rid of several wind generators. It slowed down a bunch of Randy's overall production or overall energy economy. Randy's production as well is slowed down. Why? That's weird. The fact that that slowed down is weird. Throw it on infinite build. That should no longer be a problem. But yeah, Randy accessing is maybe as a result. Dregs, on the other hand, a little bit weak on their energy economy. Hasn't been a problem yet, but they are now getting to the point where they're going to be short on energy, starting to maybe excess metal. They gotta be careful about that. Still, their expansion has been very strong. Randy has gotten caught up. But again, Dregs did forced some rebuild of the energy infrastructure, and Randy... Ooh, actually they are... They do have that 2.5 metal extractor. Not nothing, and Dregs has run out of reclaim, but Dregs did also take a lot of the reclaim, and... Holy shit, what information does Dregs have? So Dregs got the reclaim, Dregs has a bunch of information about Randy's positioning. And overall, Dregs is in a Remarkably strong position right now. Randy, on the other hand, is 
really securing that north side. And honestly, I think is in... They're not in a position where they can easily be assailed. Like, we saw earlier the wind generators were wiped out. But beyond that, no, they're actually doing quite well. And not to mention, the fact that weavers can easily go up and down the cliffs is allowing the expansion to proceed with no restrictions whatsoever. I mean, see, Randy just taking those corners and does not worry about it. Of course, there's the Redbacks coming in there, taking out everything. And that pretty well clears the path. The Dregs has nothing else to really block this. The Stinger is about it. And I don't think the Reckless is even going to worry about that. Same time, Randy's commander putting themselves into a very risky position over to the north side of the map. Jumping back into the water. Ooh, I don't know if I'd recommend that. I can see the logic. You want to get away from the units and, you know, get away from the fact that Amphbots can go underwater. But that's, like, that's farther away from the rest of your base. If you jump in, you're now closer to the rest of your units and you can't get hit. Whereas, as you can see now, well, boys and archers can shoot at the command. And the commander's not even underwater properly. But yeah, the commander can be shot at. Now it's going farther and farther behind enemy lines. Whereas if Randy had jumped over here, yeah, there would have been a slight risk of getting attacked from the side. But they had their defensive structures over here. They could have gone... They could have pulled their commander out of the dangerous areas. Pulled them back to safety. But now the commander is just stuck behind enemy lines. Pretty much short of a transport, or winning the game, just about. That commander is stuck there. Not to mention the lobsters coming in here, where the archers going into the back. That is a dead commander. Randy losing their commander in the back lines. Dregs has boatloads of reclaim in their backyard they can take whenever they feel like. That being said, Randy also, at the same time, moving in... And what the... Oh, whoops. My bad. Randy also moving in... That was following the player cursor, in case you were wondering what the heck that was going on there. The player cursor follow can be a bit laggy sometimes. Dreg's taking a fair bit of damage, but Randy not actually dealing a significant amount of damage as a result. Still, though, Randy's earlier expansion is at least providing them with enough of a buffer metal-wise that losing their commander and the four metal per second that that provides isn't going to be a major problem. Still, though, brilliant use of lobster. That was great. Like, that was the thing I'd, I hadn't... It actually slipped my mind during that little bit was that that... Yeah, Randy's commander can jump, and I guess Randy might have forgotten it too. Randy's commander can jump into the water, but with lobsters, so can the entire Amphbot factory. That was that was clever. That was well done by Dregs. Great use of that unit. Speaking of, we do actually no, this isn't lobster. This is just Dregs' commander going around behind back lines again. And doing the old pork bush. Which is working out quite well, too. Mainly thanks to the repair. While at the same time, though, Randy is taking out the southeast side of the map. Dreg's losing more and more of their economy. And of course, worth noting, spider bots... I mean, yeah, they have the lobsters to go up and down, but spider bots can just kind of walk away. However, the way this is looking, the lobsters are only going to throw them in. These recklesses don't have much of a chance... The lobsters throw all the units in here. This, yeah, there's the throw. There's the drop. And there's the archer. Oh, and a second lobster, too. Nicely done, Dregs. Getting rid of even more. That's three recklesses for the price of what? A couple of... An archer. For the price of one archer. Well done. Good use of that lobster there. Throwing another one down. Not a complete defense, mind you. The, the area was... Pretty well scoured, but Conscious coming in here will be able to reclaim everything, rebuild the metal extractors. At the same time, Drags' commander gone around back. Trying to see what it can see. I... What can Drags even see? Uh, I can see the defensive structures, that's about it. And the defensive structures can see them. At this point, it's just a matter of getting into the back lines. What's... Dragon's Commander's not upgraded. Not entirely sure what the strategy is there, but at the same time, that has pulled a lot of Randy's forces back. So if nothing else, it's putting Randy in a position where they're having to fight on two fronts. And that is allowing Dregs to get the opening in the south side of the map. This is actually quite the turnaround. Having lost those recluses, Dregs didn't really have much. They were switching over to shield bots in the process. And that... 
that was a fairly expensive switch, considering the timing. They lost their entire army, so they're starting from scratch, while Dreg's only lost a couple archers. Not to mention Dreg's having all that reclaim, seeing as it was in their base that this all happened. So Randy, I think, would have had a much easier time if they had just pulled back a little bit. I mean, losing their commander was a bit of a big blow. Over Flea's coming around the side, seeing what they can do. Not a whole lot of defensive structures left. 20 Fleas should be able to take care... Or 28 Fleas. That'll definitely take care of a Lotus. I know it sounds weird to say. It's like, what do you mean? 30 units can take care of a Lotus? No, 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 no. Fleas are... Fleas are paper. <laughs> fleas do not last. But, we can see what happens. Fleas come in. The Lotus is up. And Randy playing it somewhat safe. Finds a decent angle. Gets in. Gets rid of the Lotus. Second Lotus down. Flea's coming around the side. Takes care of that conch. That is the biggest kill. Getting rid of the metal extractors is important too, but... That conch is huge. The rebuild is going to be impossible now. And the Fleas are able to wipe out the entire back line. At least getting a bit of revenge. Now Randy needs to use the momentum from this to be able to rebuild. And I don't see any constructors up, on, up, up in the front rebuilding the metal extractors here. And that is not what you want to see. Especially the fleas. They are not fight move. Oh, yeah, they are fight moving. Never mind. Perfect. I do say fight move fleas and a metal extractors because the metal extractor explosion will kill them. Because metal extractor death explosion will kill them. Fleas are, like I said, paper. Dregs, however, clearly not that worried. I mean, they are losing some stuff here and there, but now the Fleas, they're, they run their course. They did a lot of damage over to the south and the center. Good on them. It looks like they're... Are they getting rid of another conch? Yes, they are indeed getting rid of another conch. So that conch... It's two conches for 28 Fleas. Not bad. That's 600... That's 560 metal. Or, no, more than that. 700 metal. To get rid of conches. And that's not nothing. The 300 metal worth of conches, plus the metal extractors, and all the reclaim the conches are not getting as a result of being dead. Yeah, that was really valuable. I mean, that opened up... That gave Dreg some time, some pause. That bought Randy some time. They can rebuild their metal extractors, and it's still an uphill climb. Don't get me wrong. There's, there's no easy way that Dregs is going to take this game back, but it's at least possible. Dregs did open the economy back up. Bought them some time to build up their shield ball. And now buying some time to use that to protect the economy they're rebuilding. Granted, Randy is still behind. So it's it's still it's still tricky. But it's not over. That's the important thing. It's far from over. Dregs now forced to hold back a little bit. Randy has done what they needed to do. Unfortunately for them, though, Dreg's going around the back lines. Again, building up a bit of pork. Randy has that figured out, though. So they're not going to allow that to be too big of a problem. Overall, though, I quite like this. Like, Randy just buying themselves the time they need to get into a position where they can go. Oh, wow. Okay. Didn't notice in the chat that Dimefloin was throwing quite a bit of shade on both Randy and Dreg for not being particularly good players. I disagree, but I mean, Dimefloin is a very strong player, so I suppose they might know. Dreg is certainly a very interesting player, for certain. I mean, they just, they're, 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 they just love the lobster. It's like throwing the units around, which, I mean, I can't say I, I disagree with. You know, it's... There's a lot to that, and you see there's a lot of power that comes out of that as Dregs is just able to wipe out Randy's base. Completely. Oh, Dine isn't being serious. Okay, thanks, Kingstead. I... I don't know. I mean, I think the players are good, but there's maybe some theoretical plat... Like, maybe some theoretical plateau of 0k play that all the players are at, that above that is the true high-level 0k play. Although, to be fair, the game is designed in such a way that it shouldn't matter, but... Well, you know, that's the intention. That may not be the actual fact. For the record, the game is designed... A lot of the... Okay, first off, let's... Recap the game. 
Nicely done, Dregs with the lobsters. That that game was decided by lobsters. That that was that was the MVP unit right there. Was the humble lobster. And its ability to throw other units around and basically make the Ampbot factory an all-terrain factory. Now that that's out of the way, my previous statement, the a lot of the stuff to do with automation, UI, streamlining, all that in 0k is designed to allow for players who aren't playing optimally, aren't the highest level players, to at least be able to experience the game with roughly the same balance considerations as a high level player. For By contrast, in StarCraft, for instance, there's a lot of tactics that don't really work, especially in Brood War, unless your APM is like 150, 200 or higher. Like, a lot of Terran versus Zerg in Brood War is entirely about having 200 APM or higher just because, I mean, there's, there are so many things you gotta keep in mind. You gotta have the science vessels throwing a radiate down. You have to have, on the Zerg side, you're using all the mutilists and clumping them up and doing all that while, of course, doing all the construction in the background. And just marine ball management is a very APM intensive task, trying to just dance back and forth. And then, of course, once you get defilers and dark swarm, and then trying to make sure that everything's happening inside a dark swarm. It, it, the point is, you can't do that without a high APM, and so you have to have a lot of understanding of the game in order to have that APM, because it's not just a mechanical thing, it's, it's just a pure practice thing. It's a muscle memory thing. And in 0k, the point is to try to make it so that you don't have to be... Your multitasking doesn't have to be that micromanagement intensive. And so a lot of the automation is designed so that the balance of the game that would theoretically be reached at high level in this Terran versus Zerg case, like, that's a relatively balanced matchup once you get to the point where both players are able to actually mechanically control the units well. But when that's not the case, it's it kind of varies at which stage of the game is easier. I can't remember exactly offhand, but basically you don't have, like, if you're, again, if you're, not yeah, if your radiates aren't good, then the defilers do really well. If your dark swarm placement isn't good, then the marines can just wipe out your forces. If your marine dancing isn't good, then the zerglings rip them to shreds. Like, it, it just, it goes, it's very knife edge until both players have stellar mechanics. And that makes it extremely difficult to balance. Like, actually designing around that is a nightmare. So, to avoid that, 0k's automation stuff and UI streamlining is designed to basically make it so that when you're playing at a low level and playing at a high level, the units are going to operate in similar enough ways that you're not... that the balance doesn't completely shift wildly between tiers of play. I mean, I like I said, that's the intention. I, I can't imagine that that has been perfectly executed. So... I don't know if I don't know how serious Dime Freund is being about someone commenting that they don't know about balance because of not seeing high level play because like I don't know exactly what theoretical high level play would be to the point that it would break the interactions of units. I mean granted some of the stuff we saw with the lobsters, sure, but then that's also something you can pre queue Like you can queue a lot of that lobster stuff. It wasn't dregs being like frame perfect on the jump inputs, they would have shift queued it. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that. Just shift queuing alone makes for much less intense encounters and makes it a lot easier to use the units as intended. Anyway, that was that. Sorry, a bit of a tangent. Let's move on. So we have another game, and this game is going... And a bit of a tangent, and I imagine Google Frog might come into the comments and correct me. And if they do, listen to them. They're the ones who are doing most of the design work. Speaking of... Next match is going to be between Google Frog and Made Honestly on Anvilwood. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. I again, I'm pretty sure this is a request. I don't. I think these were all requests. It it, it has been a little while. I I'm I apologize to the people who requested that I didn't get to it sooner. Here we are now. So I don't remember exactly who requested, which is probably for the best. Although I imagine most people are going to guess it was Made Honestly because. I don't... I mean, it might have been Google Frog. I don't think so, though. I don't know. Anyway, so I can imagine some people... Or actually, a spectator could have requested it as well, come to think of it. That has happened. I have had spectators request matches. But yeah, I don't want to give away who requested it, because I don't even remember who requested it myself. But if I did know, I wouldn't want to give it away, because people have complained that if they know it's a request, then it 
becomes less interesting just because because when it when they know who requested it then it's like oh well i know who's going to win anyway stay tuned that'll be up in a couple of minutes <laughs> 